more next time. I promise I'll study next time. I know I have to graduate. I know it's very important. We still don't know who shot Karim that night. Mustafa was the only suspect. Then we learned that he's not the guilty one. Actually, there are still some contradictions. He, he gave false statements. But then that woman came and gave statements as well, though. She said the same things that Mustafa said. So Mustafa's statement was then confirmed. But you still don't believe it, do you? I don't know. I mean, maybe he is telling the truth. Maybe he deceived his wife. Mustafa has changed. Maybe he was a man like that, but I couldn't see it. I didn't know, or I didn't want to know. Well, do you think about him very much nowadays? I think about his mother. The things she talked about that day. That day I went to Mustafa. I went to him and saw my house burning. I still remember the smell. I had lost one more thing. And I suffered so greatly. I felt bad when I saw it burn. The disappointment, the hopelessness, no words can explain it. Fatmagul died at that moment. But then I called after Mustafa. I was in shock. I wanted someone to just be on my side, you know? Halide said to me, go away. Get out of his life. Look, he is burning you. I think she felt bad for me and was shocked by it all. She couldn't forgive herself and wanted my forgiveness. Did you forgive her? Mustafa's not someone that you can forget that easily. You're still hurt, right? Oh, no. But sometimes I think about Mustafa. I try to understand exactly why he did it. Whether he was a man like that, and I just simply couldn't bring myself to see it before. If we hadn't lived that night, he wouldn't be a man like that now. I could have had a different life. So then you... You think that Mustafa is correct about what he said to Karem then? That Karem and the others destroyed your lives? I agree they stole our innocence, yes. I read these kind of bad things in the newspapers. Or I heard people talking and I always said, Allah forbid. I always felt sorry when I heard something like that and I never could imagine that something like that could be real. But that happened to me. I lived through it. I lived it because of every one of them. Karem is different from them. I think he was there purely by accident. I was there by accident also. I want to think like that. By the way, Karem came home. He's okay. He's getting better. He's in the room downstairs. Everybody in the house is fine. Oh, Fatmagul's well-known cake is ready. Put it there. Yes, Elif will say hello to him now. <laughs> hello, Elif. Ah, oh, you're getting so big. Yes, she's a young lady now. But she's a baby. Oh, Karen, be careful. Be careful, be careful. She's put on some weight. It's fine that she's gained weight. Oh, she's beautiful. Then she looks like her aunt. <laughs> Everyone knows that a girl will take after her paternal aunt. <laughs> I won't say anything in honor of Karem's return. He 
looks happy with a baby. <laughs> Everybody is happy in the house now. Very good. Now that Karem has been released from the hospital, have you gotten closer to each other since he returned home? Why not? Didn't you want to? Or perhaps Karem hasn't tried to earn more of your trust? It was something special that just belonged to that night. It wasn't something like that. Wait, something like what? Karem wanted you to lie down next to him, and you were able to, weren't you? It was quite a big step, wasn't it? I'm really quite proud of you, Fatma Gul. But he was not feeling well. It was pity. It wasn't something sexual. There wasn't sexuality. No, it was compassionate. Fatma Gul, the rape was brutal and cruel for you. You must know this is different. The violent cruelty cannot be present in a real and healthy relationship. You won't have a sexual relationship with him if you don't want to have one, plain and simple. He can touch you only if you let him touch you, Fatma Gul. You both will have intercourse only with your permission. I know, but it's too early to talk about that stuff now. Okay. I want to talk to Karem next week. Of course he'll come. Which day? Tuesday at 2 o'clock works. Okay, Tuesday at 2. Well, is Tuesday the 14th of February? Oh, it is. He can't come that day. Maryam's getting married. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a very good day to get married, you know. We didn't choose that day. <laughs> we wanted to get married soon. Then they said that we can get married that day. Say, uh, can he come on Wednesday? How about the 15th of February? He can come on Wednesday. Okay, he can come on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Okay, thanks so much. See you. I'm very happy for you. Best uh -huh. of luck. <gasps> thanks so much. See you, Fatma Gul. See you soon. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. You didn't want to get married on February 14th? I told you a million times, Fatmogul. Oh, well, if you don't believe me, sorry. The officers saw that we're a bit old to get married, and so they wanted to make a nice gesture to us. I appreciated it, but it's also so silly. You're not that old. That's silly talk. I'm very ashamed to say that I'm getting married on Valentine's Day, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's a very good idea. <sighs> You'll get married on a very significant day. I see that talking to the doctor made you a more positive person. Well, yes, but I'm also pretty exhausted from the appointment. Because I have to think a lot. But every time I do, I feel much better after. <laughs> That's very good. Let's go buy a dress for the wedding now, Fatma Gul. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I thought about it. I'll buy a black dress. I think that will work best for me. What do you think about that idea? Black? I won't let you wear a black dress on your wedding day. I won't wear white, Fatma Gul. Why not? Well, because it's winter and one doesn't just wear white like that. Brides wear white, though. I don't want to wear white. Cream? 